this is Sims, and we are back with more London Detective Mysteria. And in the last part, we attempted to stop Lupin, but we didn't stop Lupin. And she's already suspecting that Lupin is Lupin, or Lupine is Lupin. Um, which I just, I mean, I almost want to, <laughs> okay. I almost want to call bullshit on it. Like, bullshit! But at the same time, what did I say in the last part? Like, what, seriously? Are they all that freaking retarded that they can't figure out, like, John Lupine is Jean Lupin? Like, you just take his fucking glasses off and it's like, it's like the Clark Kent phenomenon. But yet, when she's figuring it out that fast, I'm like, oh, bullshit! <laughs> like, <laughs> I could be happy either way. Um, oh my god. So, yeah, alright. But, um... I just figured if they're going to be that fucking clueless, they'd be a little fucking clueless a little fucking longer. You know what I'm saying? But anyway. Um, and then we also realized that Pendleton really is the goddamn MVP of this game because what was I saying when she was being attacked by Frank? I just want Pendleton to come flying in here out of nowhere with, the, like, you know, and whatever. And he actually fucking did. He actually came in there and shot Frank. He's the fucking MVP. I can't even fucking believe that I said that and he actually did it. Okay. Not exactly what I said. I said use his bow and arrow because he's a magical elf and butler prince, right? Um, he's got this glorious Legolas hair, right? Like, look at it. <laughs> it's just like billows around him when he moves. Um, he's like an elf prince, but so I just figured bow and arrow, but okay, you know, he's using a rifle instead, but still... He literally was like, you shan't hurt my lady. And like shot Frank from afar to protect us. And that was just, I mean, fuck. That was great. And I'm still reeling, but forever. Never forget how awesome Pendleton is. I can't even. So damn. That's going to be another shirt I need. Like keep calm and trust Pendleton. Like always trust your butler. I'm just going to get a shirt of like best butlers ever and just like have Sebastian and Pendleton on there because they're the best. I need both of them. <laughs> anyway, so that's where we left off is Pendleton making his remark about like, I'm going to have to find another place for the rifle. <laughs> and I should have wiped the the stuff from the, you know, the marble dust or whatever the hell from the Queen's house off his shoes. And that's how we were like, oh, so that's where we are now. Hmm. What shall I do before bed? What shall I do? I think we should write in our diary because I want to write about Lupin. So. A bit of writing should be a nice way to end the evening. I open the diary and turn to a new page. I don't know if it gives us extra points for them or not, but I just interesting. The day sought to be an outrageous one, and I can only write that it succeeded on every conceivable level. Of note would be my participation in the case of the Queen's House which involved the museum being targeted by a gentleman thief who is called Jean Lupin. Excusez-moi, mademoiselle, messieurs. It is I, Jean Lupin. Yes, the gentleman thief himself. And I have taken the necklace you call Odelay's eye. It's a pity that none of us were able to stop him from carrying out his theft. Are you all right, my princess? Oh, the moon is most enchanting tonight. Oh, we would do well to bask in its romantic glow whilst we still can. Well, will you humble me? And what else? The man toyed with me relentlessly. The embarrassment fills me with such a violent energy that it's all I can do not to break my pen. And he had the nerve to call himself a gentleman? He's going to pay for what he did. I feel exhausted. Uh, perhaps it's best I go straight to bed. I have a feeling if you choose go to bed, this is exactly what she says. You know what I mean? I stood from my chair and moved to my bed. I then heard a knocking at the door. Come in. Forgive my intrusion, my lady. Pendleton entered my room, and judging by the time, I could safely assume the reason for his visit. Have you met with any of the people in that photograph? I pressed him on the very same photograph he presented to me. But Pendleton answered me as if, as if reluctant to say more than necessary. It's unfortunate, but we've run into a small problem. What do you mean? I made to visit your parents' old friend, Vicant Quincy, only to learn that he was killed in an accident some years back. In an accident? Of what nature? A brutal one. 
On his way home from a business dealing at the port of London late at night, he was, whilst inebriated, struck by a carriage. He later succumbed to his injuries. He later succumbed to his inju injuries. Oh my god. Why do I keep wanting to say industries? He succumbed to his industries. How awful! I, I don't know. Pendleton leafed through a document with a furrowed brow, expression stern as could be. And that being said, many mysteries are still swirling about this accident to this day. You mean to say that it may not be an accident? Precisely. There are no proofs to furnish my suspicion. And yet there are several points which leave me concerned. Like what? The place where his death occurred was far from his home. I cannot fathom why he would be where he was. Certain peculiarities in the testimonies of the carriage owners and driver give me pause as well. I should like to learn more. Could you jot down your findings and present them to me later? Yes, my lady. The first route falls short. Perhaps one of the others in the photograph will know something about my parents. They're all dead too, I'm guessing. And when interviewing them, see if they found anything amiss regarding the Vicomte's passing. Of course, my lady. I'll get right to work contacting the next person. Testimony A. A collection of information related to my parents' murders, gathered by Pendleton. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to know answers to shit down the road, aren't I? We're gonna have to use the guide for that, whatever the fuck it is. Um, I will have to find that. I'm not gonna win if it's like, so what do we, who killed your parents? I don't know! The falsehood of Herlock Holmes. So this is Herlock's chapter. Okay. The morning was another pretty one for pleasantries and breakfast. Okay, we should have just done the last six fucking minutes in the last fucking part. But maybe this time we'll be able to wrap the chapter up in like the two part, the normal, what was it? It's like two parts per chapter or so. The morning was another pretty one for pleasantries and breakfast. It would be perfect. It would be like, okay, we're ending it. End of the chapter. But if it's like 20 minutes, in, you know, or 45, we're still going to do an hour. So whatever. Dessert as well, of course. No sooner had Pendleton finished clearing the table did he return with scones specially prepared for me. The rumor is the daughter of Viscount Brooks is missing, but I have my suspicions. The most likely possibility, as I see it, is that she's run away. Uh, see it? Uh, see it in the details. It isn't all... See it in the details. It isn't only Lady Isabella that's gone missing, but one of the servants, servants Alan Mayer, is nowhere to be found since. Other servants within the family are whispering links between the two, claiming they've been very friendly the past few months. But is that enough to claim the two eloped? Uh, and if you would allow me to pour you some tea, my lady. I'll elope with you, Pendleton. Strokes his jacket. I just want to reach I just want to, like, reach out and, like, stroke him. I'll marry you, Pendleton. Yes, it's okay. I resumed with reading the papers as Pendleton served me his finest. See, this time she doesn't, this face doesn't bother me of hers. Like, this is actually cute. Like, yes, her eyes are too big, but it's still cute. I'm okay with this, but... A wonderful Pendleton. What perfection. Modest as my sips were, each one invigorated me to my toes. I loved everything he prepared for me. But there was nothing better for my spirit than his tea. See, we love Pendleton so fucking hard. She does too. It could be that they struggle with the difference in their social classes. You might understand this Alan's position. Have you ever experienced a similar love, Pendleton? Oh my god, don't break the man's heart! Excuse me? Have you struggled with love for one above your class? I shared the exact page I was reading. Pendleton's reaction was, well, it was unexpected to me. One that was difficult to put into words. <laughs> I still love that face he makes. <laughs> I know you do. Because I love you too. It's cool. It's a secret route that no one knows about. You weren't suggesting that I may harbor. Well, the thoughts for you as a woman. What? It was so oddly inquired that it took a moment to understand what made the question an uncomfortable one. Did he think I was asking if I was a candidate for his affections? It's the route I dream of. That is not what I'm suggesting. I meant love in a general sense. Ah, I see. A relief that. The idea was so ludicrous that I couldn't fathom why you proposed it. Is it so far-fetched that it warrants ludicrous? He spoke more freely than any butler I knew. Ahem. To answer your question, I've experienced something similar once before. Yes. The woman was, indeed, out of my reach. 
but I loved her with all of my heart. Oh my God, was it our mom? Oh my God, you're not my dad, are you? Fuck, that would be so creepy. Loved her, you say? A wariness struck me. Summer within, for the murkiness of it all, for the murkiness of it all was indistinct, was a glimpse of a Pendleton I'd never met. Very rare were the times he stood so, so close whilst his mind roamed outside my reach. A change of subject is in order. Do you remember what day of the week it is? Hmm? Yes, it was, as noted, but a glimpse. His stateliness returned by a single breath and a broad smile. That is an abrupt change. And of course I do. It's Sunday. Correct. And of course. What must be done on Sundays? Did I make arrangements? Did I rake and make arrangements? Nothing comes to mind. And the face is all the answer I need. Oh, how very lamentable. You've once busied your mind with sweets and dreams of a thinner waistline, but so obsessed you are now with affairs of homicidal nature that you no longer have the mental capacity for one of life's most important rituals. Woe oh, is me. If what I'm forgetting is so important, you might tell me instead of pretending to wail like a baby. I fucking love Pendleton so hard. So fucking hard. Have it your way. This baby wails because you forget morning mass. Mass? Oh, dear. No. Pendleton, I don't subscribe to your religion. Not going. How could I? Sunday church was a large part of my routine. And part of my routine it would remain. And my life had become so full of late that even faith was shelved to the back of my mind? That is important. How terrible of me. Oh, well, you're going to hell. Join the rest of us. It's better down here. What? Nothing. Hold on. Your face tells me you were thinking, how terrible of me. And I agree. I love him so hard. How is he the greatest thing in this game? How the fuck is Pendleton the greatest thing in this game? Like, all the other interactions in our boys are great and it's fun. But I live... For the fucking interactions with Pendleton. I fucking live for this. This is... I just... I can't. Anyway. Will you go? A bit of prayer at the church ought to bring you focus. Then it would. I'm much more than staying cooped up here for the day, certainly. We didn't have lessons on weekends, so it became a weekly battle to rouse myself from bed before the temptation to do nothing possessed me. But that's the greatest thing to do on a Sunday. Oh, fuck. It is Sunday right now. Shit. The weather today was exceptional. And it would have been a waste to spend the day indoors in favor of bedsheets and slumberland. That's bullshit. That sounds amazing. But then when you don't get out of bed all day and then you got to go to work the next day, you're like, oh. But I just want a day to do that. And Sunday's the best day to do it. Like, I'm just going to lay in bed and do nothing or lay around and do nothing. And then you just feel guilty. It's terrible. I did a lot of stuff today. I did dishes. I cleaned my bathtub slash shower. You know, because it's a tub shower combo thing, obviously. Like, and I went for a wall. I went for like a s almost six mile walk, five something. Well, and that's bullshit because I actually walked further than that. My thing didn't pick it all up because the walk in the woods is like five miles, and I walked up to get my mail in back, and that's like a mile. So that's like six fucking. Mi Wait, is it a a mile round trip or is it like almost a mile up and back? I think it's a mile round trip. So it's got to be six. Well, no, I think may maybe my thing said close to six. It just was a little under, but, um, but yeah, did my six mile walk and, uh, yeah. And I did dishes and I cleaned my bathtub slash shower. That was really productive for me. Cause normally I like might go for a walk, but I sure as hell don't clean anything. So it's Sunday. Like I didn't really want to have to clean a lot. But I didn't want to be like, I didn't do anything. So, like, cleaning the shower and doing the dishes was like, it is one little, I just, I'm doing this little by little. Like, even if I just go through a bit, as long as I do something. Like, I dusted a shelf. It's not a lot, but if you do one little thing a day, constantly, you just get in the habit. And, like, it's not like, oh, my God, i got to spend, like, four hours cleaning the whole, no, you don't. Spend, like, a half an hour cleaning something, you know? Anyway. We arrived at St. James's Church. Watson and Holmes were both in attendance. Good morning, Spacey. Good day to you both. And to you. <laughs> it feels strange to run into you somewhere other than school. Does it? I suppose now you mention it, we've never met this early on a Sunday. What difference does it make? We didn't come to stand outside. And we go. 
Yes, since barking orders is plenty more effective than a polite ask. Holmes, as he so often appeared, was in a tender mood that few would chance to remedy. This morning I wondered if he were especially sensitive, for his eyes were squinted from beneath with puffiness and... Okay, I can't... Hold on. Oh, shit, 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 shit. Okay. Holmes, as he so often appeared, was in a tender mood that few would chance to remedy. If he so often appears in a tender mood... You know what? That sounds weird, but anyway. This morning I wondered if he were especially sensitive, for his eyes were squinted from beneath with puffiness and over from his lids. This is what didn't make sense to me. His eyes were squinted from beneath with puffiness and over from his lids, not unlike the way one copes from an unbearable headache. Okay, that wording... Okay, sometimes I know I talk about the poeticness of the wording. That... But what? Okay, his eyes are fucking puffy. Anyway, so. Short on sleep as you are. No one else knows but me. I won't kill you to say please. Why? Do you feel well, Holmes? I'm like a real bench winner. Now, can we please go in? Would you step to the side, budding doctor? Marple, how long have you been here? Mm, from when you said... Good morning, Spacey, or so. That was the very first thing I said. Marple next turned from Watson to me. A pleasant morning to you, Spacey. And to you as well, Marple. She greeted with composure. Watson stood behind her, wearing an expression, though, that was desperate to speak while it's left speechless. I'm never quite sure if they get on well or not. But what chance that we all meet here... Oh, ahem. <clears throat> but what chance that we all met here... I had no plans secured later, and seeing them presented a number of wonderful ideas. I could have marched back home, head held high, knowing religious requirement had been done, and that I remained a well-to-do believer. But th wh where would be the fun in that? I had to make use of this occasion. A thought. What if we enjoyed our afternoon tea together? You're such a dear, Holmes. I'll bring you some delicious sweets next time. There's no time like the present. Watson, Holmes, hmm? Would it be alright if I pop by your office later? Or we could walk together after the service is over. Of course it'd be alright. We'd be happy to have you. We would not, Watson. You can't decide on your own. I know. You should come with us, Marple. I love how we fucking ignore Holmes, though. I like, okay, I, I do. So she's kind of derpy and stupid. Like, she can't fucking get, like, sayings at all, and you want to smack her and be like, why are you stupid? Um,. It is kind of adorable, though. I'll give it that. It's like, ah, oh, you're so dumb. It's kind of cute. It's really just the fact, though, sometimes that she's snarky to Holmes. But it's also the fact that it's like, you don't just get to... Marble, you should come with us. Okay, everybody. And he's like, why is everybody the fucking listening to me? Like, we just ignore him. <laughs> we love him, but we ignore him. And it's great. I love it. So I've turned invisible. Yes, you have, but I love you. I would love to, Spacey. But I've regrettably something else to take care of today. That's a shame. I'll be sure to come when the time presents itself. You needn't look so glum. She stroked my hair to comfort me. I shall take that as a promise. Uh, yes. Spacey. Watson, for his part, was reluctant to bring something up. Perhaps I've been too forward. You see, our flat... Our flat is... Have you your own matters to take care of? If the timing is inconvenient, I quite understand. Oh, no. Uh, nothing at the moment. I'm more worried that the place is, um, not tidy. It's a real mess, if I'm honest. I hope that won't be a bother to you. It's not a bother. I'm sure you're making it worse than it is. They're boys. How I wish they were true. <laughs> Girls are so much slobbier than boys. I'm serious. It was in the Baker Street. It, okay, it's just literally like, so, no, girls are more slovenly than boys. It's just, when you go to a guy's apartment, the shit everyone, they're like, oh, whatever, my apartment's dirty. And when you go to a girl's apartment, you're like, girls aren't that. So that's because we just spent four fucking decades, like, scrubbing everything and shoving everything in closets, like, speed cleaning, like, it looks presentable. And you come in, you're like, I'm sorry, it's such a mess. And they're like, no, it looks fine. And you're like, fine. Fine! This place is impeccable! Compared to what it normally looks like. And by fine, it literally only looks fine. 
it's a, it looks maybe look a little cluttered and a little dusty, but that is impeccable to us because we're fucking lazy. Okay, there are some crazy ass bitches that just clean way too much, but for the most part, we're slobs. There's so much fucking dust. There's so much dust in my apartment. But then again, I have so many little knickknack things that it's like, I just don't want... No. Nah. <laughs> just... Look, the dust bunnies and I are friends. Anyway. It was in the Baker Street office when I finally knew what Watson meant. Watson darted into one room, arms straining to carry a mass of books, which had been previously scattered about this way and that. And straight after he darted out again, this time collecting a mountain of clothes and other misplaced knickknacks along the way. It wasn't cleaning. It was shuffling from one incorrect place to another temporary or very permanent incorrect place. I... I... I should have come at another time. Was I pleased to have been invited? Absolutely. And once I arrived, did this change to a despondent hunch that I may be in the way? Most assuredly. As I stood and ready to excuse myself with a curtsy, Holmes entered with a tea set on a tray. I went to the trouble of making this for you, Miss Whitley, so you'd best drink it. Th thank you. I took a small sip. It's delicious. Of course it is. I brewed it. Oh, Holmes, why don't you pour me a cup? I'm not going to the effort of pouring a cup that will soon find itself all over the floor. Make your own. Have a little pity for me. Just then we were interrupted by a knock at the door. Yes? Who is it? Were you expecting a visitor? No one. I can only must I can only assume they must be here to give us work. I do apologize for the mess. Uh, please, right this way. Watson escorted the woman inside. I would, at first glance, and in simple terms, describe her as a middle-aged woman on the cusp of being referred to as elderly. The poor woman is terribly off-color. It's Madame Janet. When he observed her for himself, Holmes stiffened considerably and whispered her name in a low, unsettled tone. It was not one second later that he dived downward to hide beside the table with a clumsy kathunk of movement. A clumsy maneuver on his part, strange in general by anyone's review, but made stranger from a man like Holmes. What's wrong, Hol- Do not speak my name. Holmes glowering proved ineffective when paired with panic. That woman is the wife of Duke Alex Janet. He died of a heart attack last month. Excuse me, I've- just remembered something that needs my immediate attention. The boy detective continued with his bizarre behavior. It was first the table, next to sprint to the wall, after this slithering that fooled no one, and finally a gallop through the door frame for his final escape. Huh? Wait, huh? Hush! Holmes was a man of stern glares, and the intensity of the one he sent to Watson was historical. Oh, by the way, what, uh, Holmes... What? It wouldn't do for me to be getting in the way while you have a client here. I shall take my leave and return home at once. I see you in class tomorrow. Wh what's going on? This is your home! He ignored Watson's cries to stop and raced through the back entrance without further discussion. Nothing more could be done. <laughs> I wonder just what is going through Watson's head now. Pardon me. You're Madam Janet, if I'm not mistaken. Is there, uh, anything we can... How may I help you? I have something I should like to discuss with Mr. Holmes directly. Directly? I've received many a credible word regarding his capabilities, um, but it was not until this moment that I could bring myself to arrange a meeting. I am to leave London tomorrow evening and, and naturally... My mansion will not be under my eye during my time away, uh, meaning this is my last chance to request his help. If his work is as glowing as his reputation, then I am certain he can put my mind at rest. As it stands, I tremble at the notion of leaving my home unattended. How unfortunate that he just left. Upon her final desperate plea, Watson righted his shoulders and lifted his chin to assume an aura of confidence. Whatever he was to say, he wished for it to be a bold declaration. Pray, I would hear more details, Madam Janet. <laughs> She's looking at him like, the fuck are you doing? I, Holmes, would be delighted to take on your case. What? What? And this declaration was too much of a shock. 
All I could do was stare, mouth hanging open. He's gone mad. What is he thinking? My, you're Mr. Holmes. Do forgive me for not realizing sooner. You have a sturdier figure than I was led to believe. I've become out of touch with the world since I stopped reading the paper after my husband's passing. Ah, uh, but that is neither here nor there. I'm so very pleased by your enthusiasm. I don't know if this is the voice I literally just gave her two seconds ago, but whatever. The madam was moved. Very genuinely, she stood up and grasped his hand with a shaken, earnest grip. Well, well, why don't we get comfortable here and you start from the beginning? It was only after he gently broke free of this that he indicated to a chair in the room. Pardon my asking, but who is this young lady? M me? Um, I'm... Oh, I apologize for not... Oh, God. <laughs> I knew he was going to say it. I, I'm sorry, I was choked it up. Oh, well, I apologize for not introducing her earlier. She's... Uh, she's Miss Watson, my very capable assistant. I'm who? This is absurd, Watson. I thought my jaw would unhinge. Watson tried desperately to convey a message without saying a word. He wants me to go along with this? Oh, easier said than done. Oh, I've been told your assistant's name, but... And that she was a woman. Oh, that's quite a detail to... To have not heard from anyone. She made it no secret that she carried suspicions, and rightly so. Very well, I'll play his game, but he's getting a stern lecture from me as soon as we're alone. How strange they never mentioned it, but I am indeed Watson. I did not mean to question you, but all I've heard has suggested you appeared strong and burly. A trick in the wording, madam. And by all appearances, I don't look the part, but I'm a fair bit stronger than you would expect of my size. Here, if you still carry doubts, I'll show you by lifting up this cupboard. Heave! I roused as much strength as my tiny arms possessed and successfully lifted it from the ground. And this is when my attempt to act as an accomplice went awry. G ow! Uh, are you alright, Miss Watson? I did not possess the absolute best posture for lifting heavy objects, so to pick this heavy thing up caused a pain so severe that I nearly let it smack the ground. The only reason I didn't drop was due to Watson, who came to my aid. <laughs> this would be simple work for her, uh, but she's in the midst of recovering from an injury. And nothing awful, mind. Only from a scuffle after apprehending a criminal. One would expect she'd take more care in light of that, uh, but she can't resist a challenge. Come now, Watson. And spare a thought for all the worry it causes me. Yes, of course. I believe you, Miss Watson, so I beg that you take a proper rest. It wouldn't do for a young lady to suffer injury on my account. Y yes you're right. Unable to disobey, I took my seat. Right. Uh, now that we're settled in, would you mind telling us everything? Is this actually Watson's chapter, not Holmes's chapter? <laughs> Watson gave a final glimpse of concern before returning to our client. We listened in silence as Madame Janet told her story. She spoke in a slow, aged manner choosing her words with care and between depthful pauses. I shall repeat everything in summary to ensure I understand correctly. Your troubles began when you lost your husband last month to a heart attack and inherited his fortune. Since then, strange happenings have occurred one after the other. It's Mr. Jenkins in a mask. He wants the dime he wants the coal mine because there's diamonds in it or something. I don't know, whatever. Your bullet was injured by a snake raised at the mansion. One of your maids collapsed from illness. And you were pushed down a staircase during a trip to London the fortnight previously. Oh, this has led you to believe you and your servants are being targeted by someone after your inheritance, correct? Yes, please, I beg you. I must have your help. If I were the only victim, I might continue to remain ignorant. But I cannot bear to see those around me suffer. What will happen come tomorrow when I'm away? When I've signed the formal inheritance proceedings at my husband's family home, I fear with all my heart for those under my employ. To speak so uncertainly would commonly lead to suspicion, but I could conclude this woman was an honest soul. These episodes brought her an unease that haunted her. This, with no trace of doubt, was the reason she spoke in such an irregular rhythm. Would you permit me to ask if you have any immediate family other than your late husband? A son, whom we adopted ten years prior. His name is Ted. I have not seen much of him lately, however. He left home half a year ago. And why did he leave? 
He had a rather frightful quarrel with my husband over inheriting the family name before storming out. Is he aware of his father's death? Or these strange things you've been telling us? He knows of his father's passing, uh, but none of what's been happening since. I've yet to see him since the funeral. We had little chance to speak during the funeral as it was. Why, when I noticed an injury on his arm, he refused to speak of what cost it. She mustn't want to worry him any more than necessary. So are we to take it that Ted is the one trying? So your friends are going to try to poison you, steal your shit, and your adopted kids are going to murder you? Because I'm just saying it's the person closest to you, so it's probably Ted. Like, I don't know. She mustn't want to worry him any more than necessary. I already read that. If it was a quarrel over matters of inheritance, then is it because your son has no desire to receive anything? The opposite. My husband expressed him candidly. I won't allow you to inherit the family name as you are now. Can you think of any reason he would say that? I'm afraid I can't. She leant forward, just subtly, ever so subtly this movement was, as if she wished to add something more. Then nothing came, for she decided against it. <laughs> so her husband thinks that something was wrong, like the son was doing something I mean, inappropriate, maybe, I don't know. You know, you're a scoundrel. Anyway, I think that's the most we can work with for the present. I wouldn't be any trouble if the two of us visited your mansion for a more thorough investigation. Oh, it most certainly would not. That was, in fact, the main purpose of my visit. Thank you. We'll need a moment to prepare. So I hope you're comfortable waiting here for a moment. Perfect. How to sort out this higgledy, higgledy, piggledy name business? Higgledy, piggledy. I have heard that before. I'm not even going to fucking lie, higgledy piggledy. But I have. I just. But you forget until you. Re and I just never in my life fucking imagined that it would just ever come to fruition and exist again. Wow. I thought that phrase disappeared into the ether and was just. Wow. I scrambled after Watson as he stepped into the next room. That's something we should bring back. Higgledy piggledy. Higgledy piggledy! And shenanigans! These, there are certain things that we should just bring back. I'm just saying. Oh, this is a bigger case than I expected. To affect the moment, Watson exhaled with a loud drama as the door clicked behind us. Whose bedroom are we in? Are we in Watson's bedroom? Girl, you in his bedroom? Damn. Watson, just what are you up to? Oh, right. Oh, I hope you weren't too angry. You're, um, not hurt, are you, Spacey? I'm perfectly well. But was it really so necessary to lie? I wouldn't have if I hadn't heard out of Holmes first. Madame Jenna's mansion is well known for being full of animals. Right. Oh. Is he, like, allergic to animals? Were I to go to a place like that, I'd scarcely come back a lot. No, never mind that. Whatever the reason, I have another urgent task to look into. I need to advance, investigate something in this letter. It is of the utmost import. It is of the utmost importance you work this case, Holmes. I wonder if he's allergic to animals. <laughs> I wouldn't come back alive. It's filled with animals. I wouldn't come back alive. Are you allergic to animals, Holmes? Shut up! Oh my God! Why weren't you freaking out with all the cats? And that I don't know. Anyway, and there you have it. Does he do poorly with animals? He'll never admit it, but he's awful with them. I'm not sure what we should do after hearing her story, though. Uh, this is no small, small case. Or do animals just attack him like they hate him? Oh, you know what it is? They do hate him. Remember the cat case? Yeah, Watson's petting the cats and Holmes tries and the cat's like, Aah! and he's like, the fuck? Like, he tries. Animals hate him. <laughs> That's fucking adorable. I'll have to look into it some, to some extent, of course. You wouldn't turn away a woman in her state, in her state, would you? This laughable happening did not inspire a jest on Watson's part. This curiosity, this mystery, this situation that was dire to the woman inspired him to become the real Holmes. I would have, I would have to make do. I would have to, to make to be to with being, yeah. I would have to make do with being annoyed at Holmes over Watson then. I couldn't. So you won't be going alone. I'm your assistant, and that is what assistants do. I am sorry for calling you Miss Watson out of the blue the way I did. Really, I am. 
You aren't bothered, are you? Nah, someday we'll be Miss Watson, just not in this path, but... I was startled, but not bothered. At this point, I would like to help Madam Janet as well. And you. Thank you, Spacey. Spacey? I think you'll find I prefer to be called Miss Watson. Isn't that right, Holmes? Oh, of course. Right. He's all embarrassed. Look at him, he's like, Call me Mrs. Watson. He's like, Mrs. Watson? You're like, Mr. Watson? He's like, This is awkward. I fucking love that. Ugh, be still my heart. How could I give her my surname? Like, it's nothing at all. Ugh, it's not the same as being married to her, you idiot. Told you that's what he was thinking, basically. Hmm? Is something the matter, Watson? N nothing. Oh, let's go back. Uh, the madam's been kept waiting long enough. We then set off for the mansion, which we discovered was situated along the outskirts of London. It took but our immediate arrival to see why it was known for its animals. The garden, vast and surrounded by a, st a, st a sturdy fence. Okay, you know, I complimented like two parts ago or whatever, like, oh my god, like, the th they obviously hired Tim though, because like for type and shit, because like, come on, a sturdy fence. I have to make two. All right. Come on, you're making me look like a jackass now. Anyway, surrounded by a sturdy fence, was home for breeds of all kinds to roam. Dogs, cats, ducks, pigs, and others were in view. And a horse, sounded like a fucking horse. Did it say horse? I didn't think it did. I don't know. What a sight! You must love animals, don't you? This is actually really pretty. I like the way this looks. You could build this shit in The Sims. There's no front door, though. <laughs> like, where's the door? Is this it? That's a window. Where the fuck is the front door? There's no front door. Maybe, like, there's doors here, like, around this corner. Like, bloop, you go around the corner and there's doors. Interesting. My late husband was particularly fond of them. He would bring in all manner of exotic creatures from abroad to raise them without a second thought. And the mansion is treated as something of a zoo amongst the locals, as we have visitors who come from time to time to look at them. It became so known that a respected zoologist, Baron Lionel, once came to admire the grounds two years ago. Perhaps you know him. He's very active in the fields of hunting foxes and rare game before stuffing them, you see. Um, but he appeared most impressed by our collection. Well, I'd love to see some of the more exotic ones if I could. Hmm. What is it, War Holmes? Well, this bloke, um, fellow, has been following me since we stepped in. Fine Watson was a stunning jet black horse. This is fucking adorable. Oh, well, well. He's always been reluctant to approach anyone who wasn't my husband. You must have a way with animals. <laughs> I have been known to attract them, yes. My husband loved smoking, so that he has his pipe lighted, whether in the house, a carriage, or anywhere else, except in front of this very horse. That's quite a bond he must have had. A real task it is to separate a, s a smoking man from his pipe. Watson motioned to stroke the horse in a way that said he had done so a thousand times before. The horse in turn lowered its head and appeared all too pleased with the attention. This is fucking adorable. He's like, um, this horse is following me. Animals must like you. What gives you that idea? Because you're like the fucking Pied Piper and all the fucking animals are following you. What are you, a Disney princess? <laughs> Watson, the Disney princess. Look at how much he's enjoying himself. <laughs> I adore horses, so I'd be real... <clears throat> Quite tickled pink if he is. In moments, there was a healthy crowd of handles surrounding Watson. Birds flittered atop his hat. Curious dogs grew excited, and other animals arrived to beg for a loving pet. I fucking told you! What did I literally just say? It's like my psychic is strong in this game. Like, I don't know what happened. Like, all the animals following him, and here they all are following him. And he is. Okay. So what? So Jack the Ripper is like the fucking Disney villain, but like Watson is a motherfucking Disney princess. I love him. Like this is great. He wasn't my favorite at first, but like he just got so much more charming. Like he's adorable. Don't get me wrong, but like, but I love the Disney princess effect. Like I, this is just, I love this. Um, Watson, are you attracting them on purpose? She did say her husband loved them, didn't she? I ought to stand in his boots before solving a mystery about him. The more proofs, the better. Fibber. Speaking of animals, you mentioned you were raising the snake that attacked your butler, if I recall correctly. It isn't allowed to roam the grounds freely, is it? Oh, no. 
Oh, he couldn't possibly let a swamp adder wander on its own. I knew of swamp adders, and they were known for their incredible size. Reports had measured them to be up to 190 centimeters in length. Oh, to see a snake so massive in person. I like the imagination for it, but the venom they produce must be potent. What you doing? You playing in your cage like a good weirdo? Crazy bird. Did your butler recover? By God's grace, yes. He managed to avoid being bitten directly and only received a small scrape as he moved out of its path. I'm so relieved he wasn't hurt. It was only because of m Welcome home, madam. Oh, the monocle. Fucking nice. What's this? I was under the impression you had gone to enlist the help of a detective, not the Pied Piper. Haha! <laughs> what did I say? Fucking A! The number of animals gaily trotting behind Watson increased by the minute. Am I? You are a character, Mr. Holmes. <laughs> you flatter me. There wasn't any need to come all the way out here to welcome me, Lot. Perhaps so, but I happen to be returning from the stable. I wish to introduce the two of you to Lot, the butler I spoke of earlier. He has been working for us longer than any other. Lot, this is the famed detective, Herlock Holmes, and his assistant, Miss Watson. They came all the way from London's heart after hearing my story. Is it Lot? Is Lot doing it so that we have to... Now we're going to fear Pendleton? Jesus. Is that so? And then I will show you to the mansion right this way. I have no idea if that... I think I've seriously fucked up all their voices, but who cares? He's an unusually gruff butler. Forgive him. He isn't an especially friendly man on the surface. But you'll not find a man more kind or diligent. My husband trusted him wholly. Oh, there's nothing to forgive. I knew he was a good man. You did? How? Because all the animals here love him. They flock to him the way they did you, uh, Holmes. And that alone is enough to know? He surely spent many years watching over them. Oh, yeah, he did it. He did it. Because he wa because he loves the animals and she's going to sell them or something. Which only adds to the mystery. Why would the snake choose to attack him? And Madame Janet looked terrible despite... Uh, terribly desperate to speak up earlier. I placed those observations comfortably at the forefront of my mind as we were led into the mansion. We were welcomed by two maids, Ash and Sophia. Ash, Sophia, and Lot were the only three servants who lived with the madam. Well, we consider how the culprit has been targeting you. Yeah, it's likely they're lurking either here or nearby. If we have your blessing, we'll survey the mansion for clues of any kind. By all means. She continued to guide us around the mansion, presenting us several places of interest. We explored the garden, the attic, the servants' quarters, but they lacked evidence of any kind. Not so much as a stray hair out of place. It was all too perfect. I don't see anything that would show they came from the outside. <clears throat> Watson tripped over a table. A vase set on top of it tipped violently downwards. Oh no! I was able to catch it just before it hit the ground. My heart was seized first with the rush of the unexpected, and then seized again with the purge of, of a rush having come to pass. God, it would have been awful had it broken. Are you hurt? No, I'm all right. I'm so sorry, madam. You got all this trouble and I almost break your vase. Oh, please don't concern yourself. Madam Jana went to Watson's side in concern, but in my alertness did I suspect something wasn't right. Are you all right, madam? You've looked rather short of breath since our arrival. I was correct. Madam! She collapsed. It was Watson who went to her then the other way around, and as he did, he very carefully raised her, arms supporting her whole back. He took to examining her as a doctor would. What's happened, madam? Lot's voice trembled from the sight. He'd extended his arms as she fell like Watson, but was just shy of meeting her. Her breathing is shallow, and her heartbeat is rapid, but it's her color that concerns me. It looks far too poor for this to be a simple respiratory disorder. We must take her to her room at once. Lead the way. The butler waited for Watson to cradle the madam in his arms before showing him to her bedroom for rest. I followed. I'm so terribly sorry for all this. Oh, there's no need for that. If I might ask, have you been feeling unwell the entire time you've been with us? What of her visit to Baker Street? This incident brought to mind how off-color Madame Janet was when we first introduced. She never once appeared well, 
But could I have mistaken this for age and nerves? I suppose I am paying the price for taking more rest. Ever since my husband died, headaches, stomach pains, and nausea have become regrettably common. This all started after his death? You'll have to pardon how I forced you to carry me, Mr. Holmes. I never meant to disrupt your investigation. It was my pleasure. I feel terrible for having made you guide us when you were in such a state. Lot blamed himself. I could see it in how he clenched his fists, not out of rage, but to contain a guilt that festered beneath the flesh. I could never fault you when I said nothing. To guide you was the least I could do. If only I could do more. It was the same when Ash collapsed. And when I was pushed down those stairs, Sophie had to save me. All I could do was panic. And how terrible that I hadn't finished showing you the mansion. As so long as you find them agreeable lot, Sophia and Ash shall finish in my stead. I trust them with my life. They will, without a doubt, provide you with all the assistance you might need. We retired from the bedroom in order for the madam to rest. Uh, places we had left were the kitchen and her husband's study, I think. Hmm. Would it be possible to see the inside of the stables as well, Lot? Certainly. I hadn't taken you as one to be interested in exotic animals, Miss Watson. It's true that I'm curious about them, but I'm most curious about the swamp adder. Well then, where shall we investigate first? If it's no trouble, I want to visit a few places. Let's go to the stable. That sounds fun. Could you show us inside the stable, then? Lot was the one to oblige and guide us. I trust you do well with animals, Miss Watson. Absolutely, I... Uh, I do! Holmes and I love them. You have no reason to worry. But I do! Think before you speak, Watson! Sorry, slip of the tongue. We arrived and Lot led us inside. He also said miss. Bother, I was prepared for snakes, but never a tiger. It would have been wise to ask what was in here before coming. This is incredible. I never thought I'd live to see a Bengal tiger in person. Really, thank you so much for letting us come in here. When I was a boy, I'd always dreamed of being able to ride on the back of one of those. I'm relieved you gave up on that dream before you were eaten. This trip proved particularly darling to Watson, whose own smile expanded hopelessly upon every new creature for whom he could shower with affection. I'm pleased that you are enjoying the tour. If I may, Lot, I have something I should like to ask. What might that be? Why are you lying to Madam Janet? You said the injury to your arm was minor at best. It isn't? Whatever do you mean? Lot's naturally rigid features seem to grow more strained. We were handling the animals earlier. I noticed how actively you worked to avoid your left arm touching anything. Earlier, you extended your arm to catch the madam when she fell. Well, you didn't extend it all the way, so you weren't able to catch her. It's natural for one to stop moving when they feel pain. I assume you wanted to be the one to carry her to her room as well, but you had me do it. Not because you didn't want to, but because you weren't able to. Oh my, he's acting the part of Holmes rather well. I simply do not wish to add to her burdens. He lowered his tone to nearly a whisper. I admit to you my injury is more than a scrape, but I must reiterate that I wasn't bitten. Uh, this will heal before long. Lot, am I correct that it was Madame Janet who was attacked? When she mentioned the attack in the garden, she spoke as though she blamed herself for the incident. She has no reason to blame herself for anything. All she's done is care for the creatures her husband held dear. Okay, so it's not Lot. It, however, became aggressive in nature after its fangs were stolen. It made you attack her any time she approached, and I feel it is well within my duties to defend her. Who would steal a snake's fangs? Might it be related to the swamp adder's neurotoxin? You remember our lessons from Mr. Underwood, don't you? There are several kinds of poisons and such, including ones that can result in paralysis and heart failure. I wouldn't forget. They're all terrifying. Indeed. The Master originally brought that snake from India, and its skin and fangs are considered exceptionally valuable. It would not be a shock to learn a visitor spread word of an exotic snake being raised here. It's disgraceful to know anyone would harm the animals my master left behind. And for what? Money? Truly disgraceful. But the stable is always locked, is it not? We're only in here due to the key you possess. So someone came in. Oh, okay, it's the sun. 
He came in, stole the snake fang, poisoned his father, snake attacked them. Why? Or he was milking the snake. I don't know. So that no one would be able to trace it. I don't know. Correct. Only those who work at the mansion should have access to the key to unlock the stable. So how could the thief have gotten hold of it? Why would someone want to steal a snake's fangs? Money is a possibility, but it's only one. If all one needed is a key to commit the theft, and only those who work at the mansion have one, then our list of suspects has been narrowed. <laughs> Lot frowned. I suggested to Madam Janet that we might consult with her son regarding this issue. Yet she did not want to cause him undue worry and refused to entertain the idea. He would want to know, I imagine. He's already lost his father. Watson remained deep in thought. Now let's have a look somewhere else. Right. We left the stable to continue our work. If it's no trouble, I want to visit a few places. I'll just... Perhaps we could see the kitchen? Sophia was the one to oblige and guide us. Here we are. Look, there's every piece of cooking equipment under the sun in here. As the head maid, I'm charged with preparing the madam's meals. They're simply the tools I need for the job. I have no idea why I gave her that. I just, I just wanted to have some fun with this. Have you been working here for long? About two years, I suppose. I was appointed as head maid roughly six months ago. Appointed by her personally? She must trust you quite a bit. Oh, I wouldn't presume that. A lot is much more dependable than I am. Whatever his grace went, he would take a lot with him. He had so wished to accompany him the day of the heart attack. I don't know what kind of accent I'm giving her because it's not even real. It's not even right. Don't even. Don't judge me. The atmosphere around the woman darkened. From what I've been made aware, he was very sudden. I bought a cab when he was on his way home. It was one of the few times Lot hadn't accompanied him, accompanied him due to illness. He blames himself for not being there. He couldn't predict a heart attack. Did the master suffer from a chronic disease? None. He was a heavy smoker who loved his pipe, but he never suffered from a disease of any kind. And the cause of his heart attack is unknown. Excuse me, I feel as though I should have said nothing. All I did was dampen your spirits. Oh, don't be. We appreciate you talking to us. Don't you, uh, prepare all the meals in the mansion yourself? Or do you, uh? I do. Ash is the one who sets the table and takes the food out, mind. It's impressive how you handle the cooking in addition to your regular cleaning duties. You remind me of my family's butler. Thank you very much. Although... Sophia raised an eyebrow in suspicion. Would it be impolite of me to ask if you live in a mansion of your own? If you have a butler? I've been under the impression you were Mr. Holmes' assistant. Well, well, that's, um... Oh, whoop, 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 sorry. I accidentally double-skipped. Um, I've got a question. You helped the madam when she was pushed down the stairs a fortnight ago, correct? Watson stepped in to help after he noticed my fumbling and fidgeting. Good show, real Watson. Did you happen to see the face of the one who pushed her? Sadly, I did not. I was so focused on assisting her that I never looked her in the face. I only recall her being a slender woman. Oh. So she was slender. Will you make a note of him, Miss Watson? Uh, absolutely, Holmes. I'm such a fool. That could have been much worse had Watson not stepped in. I then noticed a single meat pie, fully prepared and looking ready for partaking. I wonder what that's doing here. Did you bake that? It looks just delicious. Would you care for one? Can I? When there's only one? N now, let's not get distracted. I insist you have this one. As I've made plenty. All right, if you insist. God, this tastes absolutely scrummy. Er, pardon, it's scrumptious. Watson inhaled the pie in what felt like seconds. See here, Watson, we're here to investigate. <laughs> you certainly finished that in a hurry. You remind me ever so much of someone else I know. Her lips formed a gentle smile, but there was a touch of loneliness that I could not dismiss. Who do you mean? Oh, pardon me. I, I was reminded of how the master loved meat pies. Something wasn't right about a reaction. But what? What piece of the puzzle was I missing? Could I perhaps have another? Enough, Holmes! We must get back to work! Try as we did, there was nothing out of the ordinary in the kitchen. Let's have a look somewhere else. Right. We left the kitchen to continue our work. If it's no trouble, I want to visit a few places. 
we see the Master's study, then? Ash was the one to oblige and guide us. It's very tidy in here, isn't it? Uh, the Master did all of his work in here. And since his passing, the Madam is asked to be the sole person to clean this room. She must miss him sorely. I agree. They were a truly darling couple. And the only issue they never saw eye to eye on was in regards to their son, Ted. Was this a dispute on if he should inherit the family name? Or was it more to do with his education? I, I beg that you not breathe a word of this to anyone, as they'd be speaking out of turn. The maid lowered her voice. And Tab is not a man of impeccable conduct, to say the least. Uh, the master frequently scolded him for his habitual drinking and gambling, uh, but he never showed any signs of listening. His behavior toward women was appalling. Lacking, some might say. We've had maids who resigned because of him. Uh, yeah, that's why I was wondering if Sophia in the kitchen was like, oh, blah, 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 was in love with him. You know what I mean? But Madam Janet is such a lovely woman. Uh, did they spoil him too much as a boy, perhaps? Holmes, that's not appropriate. His suspicions... Oh, his... His suspicious are acceptable? His suspicions are acceptable from my perspective, Miss Watson. And the master and mistress couldn't be blessed with a child... Uh, so I hear they took to pampering Ted a great deal. May I ask an unpleasant question? Did you ever fall victim to this womanizing, alcoholic brute? Holmes! That may be a perfectly accurate description, but it's not one you should be using here. Have more tact! What? Then how shall I describe him? Well, er, uh, one might also think of him as an enthusiast? I've heard of gambling and alcohol enthusiasts, yes. But to call a man an enthusiast of women seems less tactful to me. Uh, well, I still find you have the least tact between us. And the two of you are quite entertaining, if you don't mind my saying. Her comments snapped the two of us back to attention. G goodness oh, we didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, please continue. Of course. When I first arrived, Ted was... How to put this? The way in which she cast her eyes downward, reluctant to finish her sentence, perhaps told more than if she had spoken the whole truth. He appeared to be seeing Sophia so he showed no particular interest in me. See, okay. Say, I suspected it, and then she said that. Mm -hmm. So if we had done this first, and then you went to the kitchen, then you know what I mean? We'd been like, huh, of someone, oh, 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 the master loved his meat pies. The master Ted. Anyway. So Sophia, uh, they were lovers? Yes, and their relationship continued right until he left the mansion half a year ago. I can only assume it's ended, since she's here and he's long gone. It must have been hard on her. I wonder if she's... It's her. Well, they make you suspect everyone in this one. This one's good. I like this one. And that's simply how love is. And no matter how powerful a bond two people share, with enough time and distance, that bond can fade to be as though it were never there at all. That's depressing. Ash was content to have a cynical view of romance. Uh, surely it isn't always like that. Oh, when you prefer to treasure those memories of someone you loved. <laughs> you speak like a man when a mystery needs solving. But I see you're still a boy where matters of the heart are concerned. Hmm? Oh, what do you mean? Uh, we've heard your recent collapse from illness. We've heard of your recent collapse from illness. Are you well now? I couldn't take seeing the conversation take any more strange turns. Very. I did suffer from headaches, stomach pains, and nausea for a time. But I feel right as right now. She sensed, un she sensed unease and smiled kindly to reassure us. Headaches, stomach pains, and nausea... Her symptoms match that of Madame Janet's. If Madame once requested I clean the study in her place upon her own illness, it was an honor to have been asked, but then I, too, grew ill before I could complete my work. What shame as a maid! Do you see those damp patches on the wall? I wish to be rid of them, but there they remain. They looked worse after it rained the day before. It's not uncommon for such patches to appear, for the mansion is older than it looks, but that doesn't make me any more fond of seeing them. Uh, the soul causes rainwater? I focused on the walls when an apt question came to mind. Mm, something in this room is poisoning, Madam Janet. I wonder, why is the wallpaper in this room different? It's a beautiful emerald and much more pretty than the beige in the other rooms. You're right. This was Sophia and Lot's idea. The Madam spends many hours here to give her mind peace. And they thought it would be a way to help lift her spirits after her loss. Again, a sense of inadequacy burns within. Excuse me. I think we've seen all we can. Shall we go visit Madame Janet? Yes, I think so.
Watson and I returned to the room where Madame Janet was waiting. Were you able to discover any clues? Well, Watson took no effort to cloak his discomfort, or it was more accurate to say he was simply not very good at hiding his emotions. When she tried to look him in the eyes, he avoided her. If it's all right, I have a few questions upon our investigation. I was uncertain, but it was prudent to follow through with the many questions swirling about my mind from our investigation. We were told that you spend much of your time in the study. Have you ever felt it all poorly during those times? Um, yeah, because notice, so something, there's something in the study is poisoning her. Well, yes, I have. A feeling unwell is nothing unusual in there. I did find that all of my symptoms grew worse on rainy days than the day after. There's some kind of poison in the wallpaper that is released with rain? Weird, I don't know. Thank you. I'd also like to ask about the time that you were attacked by the stairs in London. Did you happen to catch a glimpse of the culprit's face? Anything you can remember would be of great help. If only I did. It all happened suddenly, and I was so frightened that I didn't think to observe my surroundings. The only thing I can tell you is that the arm that pushed me was muscular enough to belong to a man. Madame Janet hung her head apologetically, is Sophia. It was muscular? Because she's mad about Ted. I was able to grasp the nearby handrail and avoid a complete fall. But had Sophia not come to my aid, that may not have ended well for me. Sophia and Ted. I owe more than I can say to the people around me. To Sophia and to Lot and to Ash as well. God has blessed me with the most wonderful servants. I consider them all my family. That's why it pains me so much to know I must leave them in the mansion tomorrow. I know I've asked plenty at this point, but may I ask one last question? Certainly. Did your late husband love meat pies? Meat pies? Hmm. I cannot say he disliked them, but he wasn't a fan of them as such. Our son, on the other hand, could never get enough of them. Told you. So we already knew because when she said that, I was like, I'm wondering if she meant, she's like, oh, I mean, the master loved meat pies. I was like, mm. I was wondering if she meant Ted and then Ash confirmed it. So I'm thinking Sophia and Ted. Thank you. How queer that Sophia told us differently. Uh, I like to ask something also. Is it true Ted's behavior has always been a bit of a problem? The aura surrounding the madam grew grave in an instant. I hope I haven't offended by asking something so sensitive. It's just that we've not heard as much as we would have liked during the investigation. You've done no such thing. It's true. I should have told you as much when we were at your office. Ted was what might call an extravagant spender. He'd taken our money to fund his evenings on more than one occasion. I turned a blind eye to it initially, but my husband and I could do no longer could do so no longer upon our discovery that he and Sophia were in a serious relationship. Hey, was that serious? Oh, were they hoping to marry one day? They were, but we couldn't allow that to happen. Ted has a duty to inherit the family name, first and foremost. The lengths we went to were unfortunate, but Ted leaving the mansion has all but severed their love affair. Yet, I cannot sever my feelings of remorse toward Sophia. She remained ever gloomy. Heavens! Is that the time? Oh, will you make the last train? You're right. I had no idea it was this late. Now it was Watson who appeared most despondent. This wasn't right. So much here was left unsolved. But what to do? What to say? Pardon me. I say this knowing full well this is bold of me. But might we ask you a favor? Anything at all. Neither of us wish to give up on this case till the very last second before your departure. Are we going to spend the night? Would you permit us, then, to spend the night here? Well, we've come this far with our investigation. We want to see it to its conclusion. Pendleton is losing his fucking shit right now. He's probably outside, to be honest with you. He's out there playing with the horsies, probably. He's out there riding around on the horse with his glorious tra hair trailing behind him. They're like, there's a ghost on a horse out there. Don't say anything. They're all, like, everyone's seeing him and like, ah, because it's glorious white hair. But I'm serious. We went to church, and we never came back. There are no cell phones. There's no phone. We didn't send him a fucking letter. He is like, ah, freaking the fuck out. You know he is. Mama Hen is freaking out. Anyway. Miss Watson. His eyes widened. 
but I meant my words. I had no inclination to turn my back on this case without seeing it through to completion. Tomorrow, the madam departs for the signing. The culprit is sure to want to finish their work before the inheritance process is complete. Tonight is their last chance. And to my great pleasure, she granted our request. Okay, I'm actually going to wrap this part up here because this is a good place to stop it. So, anyway, yeah. I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more. Oh,